Dear Sam, I am a fan of the sirloin steak. Wonder if you have a favorite way of cooking it. Alan. Well, guess what, Alan? I don't have a favorite way of cooking a sirloin steak, but I have 10 of them. I apologize for my crying eyes. I got smoke coming from behind me in the chimney. I got smoke coming from the smoker over there. And Max is puffing on a fatty blunt right now, and it's just... Listen, 10 sirloin steaks. Cooked 10 different ways. And why do we like sirloin? Chance! Because it's got that good beefy steak flavor. Good beefy steak flavor, and it's a little leaner. So it's a little better for you. Sometimes a little lean is not a bad thing. And the price of sirloin these days is not too bad. Look, it ain't great. No beef is great these days, but I think you'll find a lot of value in the sirloin steaks. Take a look at what I got in front of me right here. And here's what we're gonna do with these 10 beautiful sirloins. We're gonna smoke one, poach one in olive oil, reverse sear one, sous vide one. Wait to see what we do with that. Cook one on the flat top, one on the gas grill. We're gonna cook one directly on top of charcoal. We're gonna cook one right on top of a chimney, the one that's heating behind me. We're gonna butter baste one in a cast iron pan and we're gonna air fry one. So if you pick one at random, any one, you'll see there's not a ton of that marbling. And the marbling is what gives all that beautiful, delicious, fatty flavor. It's still a very delicious steak. It's still huge, beefy flavors. It's just dialed back a little bit on the fatty scale. But we're gonna add a little fat to a couple of these. Everything's gonna be great, but we should get started. Number one, this is going on the smoker, but we're gonna give it a little love first. And that's gonna be some Cholula hot sauce. Could be any hot sauce you like. But I don't like a hot sauce that's so hot that all you taste is burn. And some squeezed garlic, uh-oh. Hold on, tiny bit more, like that. We'll mix this, perfecto. Now the steak is gonna get this. Kosher salt and pepper, or BFF. It's the perfect amount of kosher salt, granulated garlic, coarse black pepper. We'll do this all the way around, bottom. Now we'll take some of our sauce and put it all over. And when you have, we head to the smoker. And we're up, we're in. It's not very exciting, there's no sizzle, but just you wait. To get this guy to about 100 and quarter, 130 is probably gonna be close to an hour. And we're down. Next up, we're oil poaching. So in our little eight by five, whatever it is, put a little extra virgin olive oil on the bottom. Then we take our guy, we set him right on top. And don't worry about seasoning. He's gonna get a final sear when he's all done. We'll season him then. Now we just cover him up with oil. It's gotta be submerged. Oh, I should have done something first. I can still do it. Because this guy will be in the oven and I'm gonna wanna monitor it from outside, I'm gonna take this probe thermometer, push it in to the middle. There we go. Now we submerge. Now I plug in and we see that this is 54 degrees. Oh, and it goes until it reads 120 degrees. We're gonna give it a good sear after and the temperature will come up. Away we go. Next up, we reverse sear in the toaster oven because. Because why? I'm gonna show you in a second. A little oil all the way around and then we'll season simply with our BFF. Don't forget the edges. And it's toaster oven time. So here we are, toaster oven is at 275. In goes this. Let me tell you why. Occasionally I'll hear people say, well, I could make great food if I had all the fancy stuff you do. Maybe, maybe not. But do you always need fancy stuff? Max. No. No, you don't. Case in point, this steak will reverse sear. That means cook slowly, get it to a beautiful, perfect, even doneness. Top to bottom, side to side, front to back, up to down. Then we'll sear it to give it some color. But the point is, you only need an oven. What if you're a student and you wanna cook a steak? What are you gonna do then? All I have is a toaster oven. Exactly, that's why it's there. Who's more a person of the people than us? Who's more people of the people than us? Gotta get my plurals and singulars and stuff all figured out. We're here for you. We like this idea? Of course we like this idea, it's gonna be fantastic. We're getting the longer cooking ones out of the way first, and then we'll do the fast cooking ones. The last one that's gonna take a little bit is sous vide, and you know sous vide. You cook something in a constant temperature water bath. Cooks it evenly, just like this, but it's water. And generally, you would use a sous vide piece of equipment. They're anywhere from 150 to $300, but not today, because today we're using a cooler. We call this cooler sous vide. We got your back so hard, nobody will even get near it. It doesn't make sense. Let me show you what to do. Here's our sous vide steak. Same thing, a bit of oil, front and back, top and bottom. We season with our BFF. It's a funny looking steak shape, huh? 
It's like Texas. Does it look like Texas somehow? You got this done, here's what we're gonna do. Get yourself a zippered bag and put the steak in it. So far, this is everything that you would do if you had a proper sous vide machine. But wait, don't stop there. Because now what we do is we get our little cooler and we open it up. And inside is hot water. How hot? Let's take a look. Perfect. I want it 130. That's great. We'll get this to 130 and we'll be perfect. So we take our steak and then we're gonna lower it in. And as we lower it, the theory of displacement or whatever it's called comes into play. And you'll see this bag seals around the steak. Beautiful. And if we put it there and hang this edge out and shut it. Now it's locked in and it's sous vide -ing. Now the reason people like sous vide is because once the protein, in this case, steak, but it could be chicken, fish, pork, whatever you want. Once the protein reaches the temperature of the water that's in the sous vide bath or in our cooler, it can't go over. Set it to 130, it's never gonna become a 145 degree steak. The beauty of the machines is that you dial it to a temperature and it maintains that temperature water. But in our case, we have to maintain the temperature by adding hot water as we go because it will start to cool down. Behind me, I have a tea kettle. I'll get it going. When the water slips a bit, I'll add some super hot water. I'll bring it up to 130 and we're gonna be good. Guess what? I've got a chimney behind me with hot coals in it, ready to cook on. This you would recognize as a chimney. You fill it with charcoal, you light it when it glows white, you dump it into a grill and away you go. Or in our case, chimney charcoal glowing white and on top goes this guy. What is this? This is a cooking rack. This is a steak and on we go. Now, of course, it's very hot. It's like you're cooking on a jet engine, so we're gonna have to turn it a lot. And we'll do that and it's gonna be beautiful. I don't even think it's been on a minute, but let's look and turn, perfect. Look, it's regular cooking. It's just happening at a very high temperature. It's kind of a fun way to do this. Honestly, if you don't have a lot of room, this might not be a bad way to go. So we're gonna continue as we normally do. We cook a bit, we flip. We cook a bit more, we flip a bit more. Everybody will be happy. And just keep it going. And when it's done by your instant read thermometer, it's done. Not all racks like this are rated for this level of heat. This one is. So just be sure when you're buying one that you're buying one that can handle a lot of heat because it's double duty. You wanna make cookies on it, great. You wanna cook a steak on it, you only want one rack for that, not two. Okay, our little buddy's ready. Off he comes, we'll let him rest, we'll cut him. And just like that, should we cut and see what we got here? And just like that, it's perfect steak. It's a perfect sirloin. Who wants a bite? How long did that take? Five minutes, maybe? Boys, would you like a bite? It's lovely. Mm. So good. Mm. Down. Definitely more lean, but I recognize that not everybody wants the big fatty cuts, the big ribeyes and stuff like that. A tenderloin is nice, but it's way more money than this, and this is more beef-centric than a tenderloin. I'd eat this thing all day long. It's delicious, delicious. And here we are. Fortunately, this got away from me a little bit. I think we're gonna be all right. It's in the high 130s. Take this out, thank you. I do wanna put this on some paper towels to blot it a bit, let it drip. So I'll put that there and then do this. Oh, it's very warm. And then we're gonna give it a quick sear. Let's do the salt and pepper thing with it. Put some of our BFF on, cause we haven't seasoned it yet. Throw it on the grill like right now. Throw a little bit of that oil down and the steak. And this is just for a couple seconds for some color. Because I think I over overshot. It was in the kitchen, it was not within eye range. I really don't wanna cook it too much more. We'll just do a little bit of this. All right, I'm taking it off and I'm cutting it. And, oh, we still did pretty good. It's a little bit more than I'd like. This is closer to medium plus for me, but let's see if the olive oil poaching made a difference in the flavors for the boys. Not as medium rare as I like it, but still. Mm -hmm. You know what it needs for me? It needs a little bit more of this. Not nearly as much flavor to me as the open flame. Nope. It's good, but I would never be like, oh my God, what's all that extra flavor? Because I don't think there is. All right, more. And smoker's ready to come off. Look at that crazy color from the Cholula and the garlic. All right, let's go give it a good sear. And there we are. It's pretty. We're gonna torch it a bit. And I made just a little bit more of this because one of my favorite things when I'm grilling is letting a sauce burn in a little bit. And because this was on the smoker and didn't have a chance to, I'm gonna help it along right now. With Max's favorite toy, the big torch. Quick flip, a little more brushing. Now we'll torch the bottom. One flip back. Oh, hot. Tiny bit more. One final torch. And we're there. Let's get it on. I didn't mean to say that. How 70s of me. And we cut. 
And once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's the lower temperatures that help us get this even color all the way through. This looks fantastic, by the way. And I'm really excited for this little nonsense on the outside. All right, so I will bite. Yum. It's perfect. Honestly. <laughs> all right. I've just finished my sixth cookbook. It's a grilling book. I may be changing a recipe. This combo of Cholula and garlic paste and nothing else. Oh, little BFF is ridiculous. It is so good. I have a new favorite. Damn, but wait, there's more. Okay, toaster oven reverse sear. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. And it looks okay. No, it doesn't. It looks gross. It needs to be seared. So let's throw this kit on the flat top too. But we'll give him just a little hit of oil first. Good. And on we go. And we go presentation side down first. That's because that's when the grill or flat top or whatever is at its cleanest and hottest. You want a beautiful sear. Doesn't really matter what happens to the bottom. I mean, you want it seared, but the looks are important on top. We'll give this about a minute or so and let's flip. There you go. Gorgeous. All right, 30 seconds, off she comes. And that will be now. And there we go. One more cut, let's see how we did. Ladies and gentlemen, that was out of a toaster oven. A little dinky ass toaster oven that you could have had in your dorm room or under your desk at work. Remember that Seinfeld where uh, George slept under his desk, made that little world? It could be there, sirloin, who knew? The toaster oven was at 275 until it got to 100 and quarter and then I seared it and that's this, this. I don't know why I've ignored sirloin for so long. Max said, let's do uh, some sirloin cooking stuff. I was like, yeah, I'm down. Thinking in the back of my mind, I'm not really gonna like it because I'm not a sirloin fan. Well, guess who turned his shit around and is now a sirloin fan? Don't eat the same thing all the time. Don't eat the same cuts of steak all the time. Come on, let's do something crazy right now. Don't eat the same cut of steak cooked the same way all the time. That's it, what he said, the guy in the back with the bong and the spliff and the, what else you got? What are, what? No. Don't do anymore. It's not the 80s, for God's sakes. But let's do something crazy. Crazier than Remember these coals from before when we cooked the steak on the rack? Well, now we're going to cook a steak right on the coals, directly on them. Try and make it as flat as you can. I mean, we are trying to cook a steak. And then get your steak and on you go. And don't worry about the dust and the briquettes sticking. It'll all come off. But now it's the same process as anything. We employ the turn it a lot system and it always works. So if you pick it up now, see a little bit of this. It's all gonna be fine. And back down the other side. Back and forth, back and forth. So if we give it another flippy, look, you see? They just come right off. You don't have to worry about that. Back down. Use your instant read thermometer. Pull it off at, you know, 125 to 130. You'll be great. All right, next up, the air fryer. It gets a quick spray. It gets a steak, a sirloin steak. We close up shop. We give it 400 degrees for five minutes, then we're gonna flip it, give it four, check the temp at the end of four, see how we've done. And five minutes is up. And it looks like that. Mm. Huge letdown, but wait, still a huge letdown. Don't worry, we're gonna fix it. Back we go, four more minutes. All right, this guy looks a little worse for wear. I'm gonna fix that. Okay, just wait, just wait, just wait. Looks all right. No, it doesn't. This is soy paste. I'm gonna give it a light paint. So, I mean, already it looks better, but when we get some of this on all the way around, we're gonna torch it like this. It'll just caramelize a little bit of that soy into it. Flip it over, do the top. You gotta admit, even just this makes it look better. A little more torch. Beautiful. Let's cut this guy. And just like that. Uh, if there was ever a case for cooking sirloin steaks beautifully, perfectly, 10 different ways, today's the day. Yum. Mm. Juicy, tender, so delicious, so beefy with just a hint of soy. Hint. That's just a tiny little bit. And remember, it was cooked on that raw charcoal just on top of it with the soot and the pieces sticking and it still came out amazing. Don't overthink it. Oh, but there's more. And we're there, oh, look it, it got much better. I had to add some time, it's a fairly thick steak, so we probably ended up about six minutes aside. But let's check it out. And voila, 
Doesn't look bad, does it? It's a respectable looking steak. And we cut just like that. And just like all the other ones, it continues. It just doesn't end. Air fryer. Honestly, there was a time if you told me you could make a steak this beautiful in an air fryer, I'd say you were smoking crack or something. Air fryer. You know what? It's freaking delicious. What if you don't have a grill, a smoker, a outside? What if you've just got a toaster oven and an air fryer? You can have these at school, right? Max, when you were at school, they it hadn't exist, invented yeah. them yet, but you could, I'm certain. And it, it's, it's fantastic. And hot AF. Don't stop there though. Next up, we're cooking one of our seasoned sirloins on the flat top. This is gonna be easy, but same system as always. On we go, give it a minute and a half or so, then we turn it. Just keep that system up until it's, you know, between 100 and a quarter and 130. All right, this one's kind of interesting. There's our steak, it's unseasoned. That is some basic all-purpose rub. Smoked paprika, there's garlic powder, there's a little cayenne, salt, pepper. This is mayo. Mix these together. And then a healthy glob on here. Oh, is this gonna be good? Sides. Once we get it on, I'll do what will become the top. Grill's hot, and on we go. And voila. Great stuff. Come back with a little bit more of our seasoned mayo and just let her cook. In the meantime, let's flip our flat top sirloin. There you go. Now we flip it. There you go. Just keep going. You know the drill by now. And we flip that guy. Don't worry, there's not a lot of marks there. We're flipping, it's fairly thick. It's gonna be a while. It's gonna be gorgeous by the time we're done. And, oh, looking pretty. And if you still have some of the mayo, go for it. I mean, why not? It's only gonna make it better. And our flat top is ready. Let it rest a bit, then we cut and eat it. And our little mayo grilled friend, looking pretty. Let's go, buddy. It's time to get eaten. And pretty much right off the grill is our mayo all-purpose seasoning blend combo buddy. I can't wait for this one. I really can't. And we cut. And more steak gorgeousness. Jeez Louise. Is it getting old? We can't fail today. We can't f up, but we can't eat it. I'm so hot today, you have no idea. Mm. Nicely seasoned from that all-purpose. And you're not tasting mayo, you're just tasting it being delicious. Super delicious. Damn it. And here we are. Now, I'm just gonna say one thing. Flat top, I'm sure it's gonna be nice inside. They've all been, just looks a little boring to me. So at the last minute, I've got this idea. Call me crazy. I'm gonna combine two things, a little steak sauce, and wait for it, a little blue cheese dressing. I think this is gonna be fantastic. Max is already hating it because he doesn't like blue cheese. But that's okay. That, we just created something here, people. Let's cut this guy. Everybody's nice today. So get a little bite. Here's the thing, we know what this tastes like now. We're now in love with sirloin, but now we do this. And this, I think, is gonna be something special. That so works for me. I don't know if everybody's gonna like it. Max won't even try it. Oh my God, it's fantastic. But you think we're done, and you know what? Oh, we're not done. All right, this guy is gonna be pan seared and butter basted. So hot cast iron pan, oil in, and now in goes our steak. At this point, we want to get a nice sear on this one side before we flip it. And we're turning. Beautiful. All right, here's what we want to do. We're going to give it about uh, 30 seconds a minute, and then we add the following. We're about a half a stick of butter, some rosemary, and some garlic cloves that I've just squooshed a tiny bit. And now through a process known as, um, uh, I don't, basting. We're gonna base, the butter melts, we get on our spoon and we go on top of that. But this is so damn hot. Butter infused with garlic and rosemary. Just keep that up. How fun is this? Rosemary, beef, garlic. It's a marriage made in sirloin heaven. You let it sit for a little bit, cook away, cook away, cook away. And you're looking for, oh, somewhere around one and a quarter. And what's nice is the butter gets this really beautiful nutty flavor. The garlic does what it's supposed to do. It's just a dream. I'm probably 20 degrees away from where I need to be. I have this now set up for two zone cooking. That side is hot, this side is not. I'm gonna slide the pan over to this side, close the lid, let it finish like it's in an oven. And in about five minutes, it's coming off. 
And that's what we're dealing with. Not mad about that. Is anybody mad about that? No. Oh, why would you be? Let's just go one more baste, shall we? Just a little bit more of this nutty, buttery deliciousness before you take them out. And this garlic and rosemary, I certainly don't need. It has done its job. Well, actually, I'll keep these guys here. A little bite of that might be very nice with this. Okay, I'm bored of it now. I'm bored of the gorgeous perfection. I'm not really, but I'm also, I like this idea for my bite. Oh, snap. Yes, sir. See how hot I am? It's like 800 degrees here. And I've been in front and in back and surrounded by all this heat. And every damn bite has been worth that. Mmm! Garlic, rosemary, butter. And the, you okay, Lewis? All right. Garlic, rosemary, butter, and the beefy sirloin. Oh, God. Oh, God. But you know what? We've done a lot. But you may have forgotten about one. Do you remember the sous vide? In the cooler? Hmm? Remember this guy? Get a load of this guy. So we open. And there's our hard work. We put this in, what, I think a couple hours ago, boys, right? And it's ugly AF. But that's okay. We're going to make it better. The point is, I use no fancy equipment. Nothing. Nothing electric, nothing plug-inable, no special sous vide. Just a cooler and about 125 degree water that I kept between that and 130. But you can see it is not pretty. So let's torch it up, see if we can make it look a little nicer. If you give it a little drizzle of oil, it'll help a bit. Done. And off we go. Only thing left to do is this move in three, two, and one. There you go. Sous vide, ladies and gentlemen, with a, what was that, a $15 cooler? Mother effer. Gorgeous. It's freaking gorgeous. Last bite of the day. No, not really. I'm going to eat more but it's so tender. It is so tender and no equipment. We've done very good work today. We've conquered the sirloin about as much as you can conquer a cut of beef. We cooked it 10 ways. I honestly can't say if I have a favorite after all of this. Oh, do I have a favorite? I don't know. What do we do? The garlic and the Cholula. Ew pretty amazing on that and we smoked it the smoke definitely helped find one that you like and uh, do it if this is not an example of don't do don't eat don't make the same thing the same way all the time i don't know what is hit the subscribe button we'd love you for that give us a thumbs up and you go to shopstcg.com get that cast iron pan you saw me using you know you want one